Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to migrate your WordPress website from one host to another host. And the way we're gonna do this is with a WordPress plugin, a free WordPress plugin called Duplicator. And the Duplicator plugin essentially uh, creates an archive of your WordPress website as it exists right now on your current hosting provider, including all the files and the databases. We're gonna download that archive file and basically upload it to the new hosting provider and install an exact copy of WordPress that way. So um, this the, the, there's a part of this tutorial that might look different for you depending on what your destination hosting provider is, whether you're going to access it through FTP or you know how you're basically going to upload those files. But if you understand the general concepts in this video, you can pretty much follow along step by step throughout the tutorial, start to finish, regardless of what your hosting provider is going to be. So if that's something you want to learn how to do, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial here. Um, this will, I, I actually one other thing I want to say is this is going to have no downtime on your website whatsoever. This is going to have zero impact on your, from the perspective of your users uh, on your website. So it'll be seamless from that perspective. Okay, let's go ahead and get on into the tutorial. The website that we're going to be moving is swampview.com. So what we're going to do is first start by going into the WordPress admin dashboard and installing the duplicator plugin. So let's go to the plugins, add new, and we will search for duplicator. Hit enter, and that's one of the first results. This one by Snap Creek. Let's install that. And after that's done installing, as always, we will activate the plugin. Now, before we create the archive of our website, it's going to basically take a snapshot shot of it is at this point. I, I, I've been through this before. I highly recommend that you deactivate all of your other plugins just so that there's no issue on the new uh, hosting provider. Because I've, I've run into that before where, you know, you create the archive, you upload it, and then the website just doesn't work for because one of the plugins is incompatible. So uh, what I recommend you do is temporarily deactivate. I realize this could impact your, your users, but uh, we'll be as quick as possible, 30 seconds to a minute max. Um, and then we'll go into the duplicator plugin. We'll create a new archive. That's fine for the naming convention. Click next. It's scanning our site. It's checking everything out. We get all good passes here so we can build the archive. Uh, this part takes, you know, 15, 20 seconds. So we'll just fast forward through this. Okay, and now that that's done, we have two files that we have to download. One is this installer file and one is the actual archive file. So while that's downloading, let's go back to the plugin section and reactivate all of our plugins just so that the users coming to your website um, uh, don't experience uh, anything weird happening on your website. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll just get rid of these messages that pop up and we should be good to go. So let's take this archive file and this installer file and upload it to our new hosting provider because as I said, these are uh, basically snapshots of your WordPress website as it exists. So let's go back to, uh, well not back to, let's go to our new hosting provider for the first time. I'm using Namecheap and they use cPanel for their hosting control panel. And this is the part of the tutorial where it might be slightly different for you. Um, basically what you want to look for in a new hosting provider is a way to upload a file to your new website, just to the public uh, root directory of your new website. You can do that with FTP, SSH, uh, any number of different ways, whether that's through a web browser or not. Um, I do have some videos on how to do that, which I'll link in this video as well. But what I'm going to do in cPanel is go to the file manager. And I do already have the, the basic infrastructure set up for swampview.com. Uh, so I'm going to open up that folder. And when the site is live, this is what will ho this will serve the files out of this website to swampview.com. So I'm going to upload the installer in the zip file here. So let's click on upload. And then we'll drag the installer here. And we will drag the zip file here. Uh, this probably take about a minute to upload. So we'll also fast forward through this. Okay guys, so those files have been uploaded to our new website host. And what we're gonna do now, this is a little bit confusing to explain, but basically when we go to swamp, 
swampview.com right now. This is being served from our old website host. Uh, we can basically trick our computer to thinking that when you type in swampview.com to the web browser, it's gonna go to the new website host. And the way we can do this is by editing our hosts file and telling our host file, instead of going here, we want you to go to this IP address where our new website is gonna live. So uh, I have, specific instructions for this on Windows, but what I'm gonna do here on screen today is gonna to be for Mac. So there's there's subtle differences, but the concepts are the same. So what I'm gonna do is open up a terminal window here. You can also use the Finder File Explorer to navigate to this file. What I'm gonna do is type in sudo vim. Vim is a text editor, etc hosts. So this is our host file. We're basically just editing this host file on our computer. And type in the password for your user account. And down here at the bottom of this uh, file, it's gonna look different for you, but basically you wanna take this IP address and associate it with our domain name. So let's type that in, 198.54.120.215. And that is going to be associated with swampview.com. So like I said, anytime we go to swampview.com, we're gonna go to this IP address instead of the publicly available old hosting provider's IP address, okay? Um, so we'll save that. And to demonstrate that that is actually working, uh, I think the best way to do this is to open up a guest window or some type of incognito window, uh, just so we avoid any caching issues. And if we go to swampview.com now, we see that this is our installer file that we uploaded and our zip file that we uploaded. So this is just uh, showing a directory index of the those files. And you know you can either click on installer.php or you can go slash installer.php because that file exists at that location. Hit enter and we will continue the process of installing WordPress on our new hosting provider. So let's go through this four step process. We have a write, write and accept to the terms and notices. Okay, click next. And it's gonna extract all the archive files uh, into this directory. And we, extract, we can see that happening in real time. If you go back to our file manager and refresh this, you'll see that the, the basic WordPress infrastructure, well, not this, this, is, this is the copy of your WordPress website uh, with the basic WordPress infrastructure here, as far as like your index file. And wh actually while we're in here, um, you don't wanna end up in a situation like this where you have two index files. I know from experience that index.php is uh, WordPress's index file, but we don't, this one is probably just like a landing page from uh, the old hosting provider that they had, like a default landing page. So I'm just gonna delete that because we're, we're definitely not gonna use that, but everything else in here um, looks good. So let's pull that window back up. The uh, extraction of the archive has finished. Step two is to connect to a database. So in order to, uh, well, if you, in case you're not familiar, WordPress uses a database to store all of the blog posts and all the pages and all the comments and all that stuff. So what we're gonna have to do on the, the destination hosting provider is set up that database. So we need a database name, a database user, and a database password. And we can do that within cPanel. So, and, and again, this might be slightly different for you if you're not using cPanel, but at your new website, uh, hosting provider, you wanna set up a database, okay? That's basically the, the gist of what we're doing here. So let's go to the database section here and go to MySQL databases. And I'm gonna make a new database called Swamp. I'm just gonna call it Swamp. And then that database has been created. And then we're gonna create a user. Let's call the user Swamp user. We'll give a, the user a password. Um, I'm gonna have a password over here that I'm gonna use. So we'll paste that in, there we go. Let's create that user. And then the last step here is to associate that user with the database. So if you go down a little bit further, add user to database, we wanna add the swamp user to the swamp database. Okay. Oh, and then last step here is to grant privileges to that user. I'm gonna give them all privileges for the sake of this demonstration. Um, not recommending you do that for your website. Okay, so that's good. Uh, we have our database. Let's connect the installer to that database. So if we come back here, uh, I'm gonna paste the password because I already have that on the clipboard here. The database user is 
let's find them here. This right here. So we'll copy and paste the database user. Oops. Yeah, that the, we'll copy the database name and then we'll get the database user, which is a uh, swamp user with the prefix. Okay, let's test that connection. Everything looks good. We got a pass in a good. So let's click on next. Uh, everything looks okay. So click on okay. It's installing the database and what it's doing is basically taking a copy of your old WordPress websites database and applying it to this new WordPress websites database. Okay, so we're gonna end up with the same thing. Um, title URL path, that looks good. If you're probably not gonna wanna make any changes here. So click on next and it is uh, finalizing the install. We're good, we're on step four of four. Now we can log into the admin dashboard for WordPress. Uh, I'm gonna type in my credentials here. Okay, and then we'll log in. And the installer, as you can see here, cleans up after uh, itself. So we'll close that. Um, since we're on a new hosting provider at this point, um, let's in, let's reactivate those plugins. So let's click up here, select all plugins and activate them. And I know this seems like for some people, like a, a lot of hand waving and, and trickery and stuff, but um, let me just prove to you what, what we're working with here. Okay, so uh, the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna create a, a new page here. It's just gonna be a draft page and say like this, this is the new website host, okay? Uh, we'll just save that as a draft. So when we go into our, make sure we save it, save it as a draft. Uh, when we go to our pages, we'll see that we have this draft page. This is the new website host, okay? so. At this point, we know we're on the new website hosting provider. Now, the only reason we're seeing that is because we edited that etc hosts file. So if we undo that, so let's undo that, save, um, we will go back to seeing the old website hosting provider. And, and let me completely get out of here. Uh, so just so again, with the caching issues, let's go to a new guest window and go to swampview.com. That's gonna load Swamp View, so let's log into this. WordPress admin, okay. And now, because we undid our etc host file, uh, we should not see that draft post because this is an entirely different copy of the WordPress website, the original copy on the old hosting provider. So that's why we don't see that. Now. We have a, a working copy that's publicly accessible on our old hosting provider, and we have a working copy of our website that is not public, publicly accessible on our new hosting provider. The last step that we wanna do is basically um, switch over our DNS records from pointing from the old hosting provider to the new hosting provider. So instead of pointing to the IP address of the old host, we point to the IP address of the new host. And we kind of did that on a local basis in our ETC host file, but now we want to do this for everybody. So what we want to do is uh, get that IP address again from our cPanel or your new hosting provider, if that's different than cPanel. So it's this IP address ending in 215. And where I bought my domain name is Google Domains. So I'm gonna go find that domain name in my list of domains here in Google Domains. And again, if you have bought your domain name from somewhere else, same concept applies. You just have to find your domain name, which is right here, and then go to the DNS settings for that domain name. And instead of pointing to the old IP address, let's point it to the new IP address. And um, just to be crystal clear about this, let's, in this guest window, let's verify that we're looking at the, the correct um, website, so the old website. So let's refresh this page and you'll see all those references to the, the old hosting provider, 34, 71, uh, 83, 277, right? The IP ending in 277. That is what the current, the, the old DNS records pointed at. So we wanna update those from the old IP address to the new IP address, save that. And then there's also one for www.swampview.com. So we'll edit that one as well, save that. And now as those DNS records are 
update it and let me show you what I mean by that in case you're not familiar. If you go to dnschecker.com and go to swampview.com to look up the A records, you'll see that uh, most of them are pointing to the IP address ending in 277. Now over the next few minutes to an hour, these DNS records will slowly be updated to the new IP address. So that's, it just depends. Like, there we go, we got three of them now pointing to the new IP address. So um, as time goes on, more and more will resolve to the, the new IP address. And that's what I mean when I said there's going to be no downtime. There's going to be basically, depending on where you're at in the world, a slow trickle of your users from looking at your old website to your new website, the old hosting provider to the new hosting provider. Um, and yeah, that that's that. If, if we sit here long enough, we can, and if we refresh the page long enough while disabling cache, we might see this switch over to the new IP address. And I think just for the sake of this tutorial, I'll, I'll pause here and, uh, and I'll resume the video when everything has been updated to the new IP address. And then we should be able to see that that page, that, that draft page uh, that we made um, in our WordPress admin dashboard. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, guys, I'm back and I'm happy to report that when we look at the source of these resources, they are coming from the new IP address ending in 215. And uh, just as one last confirmation, let's go to the WordPress admin dashboard. Uh, we will log in here with our username and password. And this time, if we look at the pages section, we should see that uh, we do have the, the, the draft that we created when we were on the new ho website host. So now uh, we are confident that our website is being served up to its users, our users, our visitors from the new website host and the, the WordPress migration has been completed. So um, I know there's a lot of steps involved in this, but if you got any value out of it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to help you out. I want to thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.